Welcome back to the Code Circus. Today we are going to look at some more detail into our conditional statements. When last time we were here, we looked at simple conditional statements. In most cases, we do things that are a lot more complicated than those simple conditional statements. So let's dive right in and take a look. So the first thing I want to look at is a review of looking at the Boolean operators, uh, ands and ors, along with our conditional statements. So for example, if I say if 3 is greater than 4, or Uh, let's say 10 is greater than 5, print success. When I run this, this will print success because one of those two conditions is true. Now if I switch this to an AND instead of an OR, it's not going to print success. Let me clear this just to show you. doesn't print anything because not both conditions are true. So just kind of a review for us of the basic if structure, but then also putting in with our Boolean constructor. Also review that we have our way of comparing things using equals equals, uh, not equal to, which is a exclamation point, and then an equal sign, less than, less than or equal to, which is both symbols, a greater than, and then a greater than or equal to, which again is both symbols. So the next thing we want to look at is a statement called an L if. Suppose there was an additional thing you wanted to test. So if we said, for example, if 3 is greater than 2, which we know is going to evaluate as true, we'll say print success. Actually, let's do 3 is greater than 20. There we go. Now, that's not true. So we can do what's called an L if statement, which is going to give us the ability to say, if that's not true, if 3 is not greater than 20, let's test for something else. To do that, first we have to move our indentation all the way back to the beginning or in line with the first if, and then we write L-I-F. That really stands for else if. Else if, uh, let's say, 3 is greater than 2, print second success. So now when we run this, the first success is not going to work. It's going to print the se second success because the first condition was false, but then it continued on and said, if that's false, then come and test to see if 3 is greater than 2. We uh, can also go this a little bit further and say else. Now, the else statement all by itself allows us to print out a result if neither of those are true. And again, we indent. So we're going to make this condition up here. We're going to make this false. 3 is greater than 29. So that won't be true. And when we run this, it says third success. So we know the first condition is false, so it won't print success. We know it's going to check the second condition using the else if, which is called L if. And then that's false. It continues finally to the third thing, which is not a condition. It just says, if everything else fails, print third success. Uh, here's another example. Get this in here. Where we just have an else. Say A is equal to 200, B is equal to 33. When we run this, if B is greater than A, we're going to print B is greater than A. Else, we're going to print B is not greater than A. So when I run this, it says B is not greater than A because 
this first condition was false, therefore we just do the else. Now the else in this case also does mean something. If b is not greater than a, then b must be less than or equal to a. That's what the else is really saying, that b must be less than or equal to a in this case. Now, there is a shorthand for some of these um, where we don't have to do the tabs. We could just say something like this. If we just wanted to say the first statement, I could technically put this all one line. That is a shorthand. You may see that in some places, and when you run it, it's going to not print anything, but it does work. There is a shorthand for the else, but it's a little bit different. Um, it only works for one statement. So let me go ahead and put this in. I'm going to write it right below this one and make it the same statement because the order is a little different. So I'm going to write print A if A is greater than B, else print B. So I kind of like this statement because it reads as English. Print A if A is greater than B, else print B. It's nice for a one-line statement. However, it doesn't work if there's more than one command. If you want to do more than one thing, this is not going to work. But it works very nicely for single statements. Now, if we were to write the same statement as a multi-line statement, we would say if A greater than B, colon, tab in, print A, L, else, print B. So now this is how it should be written if it's done as a multi-line. And now if we needed to do more than just print A, we could do print A, and then we could also print, let's say, let's just print an asterisk. And we could do the same thing down here, print an asterisk on a new line. And we can see we get a multiple statements here, whereas up here at line five, we can only have one statement for the conditional of A being greater than B and one statement for the else. And we can play this and run this and you can see that this works. It prints A for the line five conditional and then prints A star for the line seven conditional. So what's interesting about these conditionals is that we can actually combine conditionals and put another conditional inside of a conditional. We can make a nested conditional. We can say if, let me do this. If A is greater than B, we could then say if A equals equals B, print A is equal to B. I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to say print A is not greater than B. Okay, and then we're going to fix my numbers. So A is not greater than B. I'm going to make this 20. So we can see how this works. Let me get rid of these statements here. So uh, this is kind of interesting. This is a nested if statement, and we really have to pay attention to what's going on here. If A is greater than B, which it's um, not in this case, okay, None of these things will happen. So when I run this, nothing happens. But if I switch this back to 200, 
a couple things will happen. We know A is now greater than B. But we know A is not equal to B, so it should not print A is equal to B. All it's going to print is A, <coughs> excuse me, A is not greater than B. Actually, we should say A is greater than B. There we go. So when we run this, it prints A is greater than B. It will not print A is equal to B. So this conditional right here is evaluated, and this print statement is executed, all underneath A is greater than B. However, this print statement here is not executed because A does not equal to B. So let's switch this and make it A greater than or equal to B, and I'm going to make this to 33. And now we should see both these print statements execute. A is equal to B, A is greater than B. Uh, actually, we should make this A is greater than or equal to B to make it make sense in English. And there we go. So that makes sense. So we can nest if statements, one if statement inside of another. Here's another example. takes better use of this structure. So here's another example. This time we have an if else inside of our conditional. So we have x is equal to 41. If 41 is greater than 10, which it is, we're going to print above 10. But then we're also going to check to see if it's above 20. And since it is, we'll say, and also above 20. Otherwise, it'll say, but not above 20. So we try it first with x equals 41. And it says it's above 10 and also above 20. But let's change this to 19. It'll say above 10, but not above 20. So we can make some really good decisions with our nested if statements and nested if else statements. And L if statements can be put in there too. So we can really end up putting all of those things in there. One last thing. Suppose we, we know we want an if statement, but we're not quite sure of what we want to put in it yet. There's this interesting command called pass, which kind of acts like a placeholder. So if x is greater than 10, just pass. That means, yes, it's true. Yes, it happened to be true. But we're not really going to do anything with it. So when we run this, really nothing's going to happen. It does run. Uh, this will execute as true, but nothing happens on the screen. So if you want to save it like a placeholder, you're not quite sure what you want to put in there yet or how you want to write that, but you do want that conditional in there, you can put that pass statement in there in order to take its place. So that is all I have for you today using all of these lovely conditionals and ands and ifs and ors. I know it's a lot of things, and there are some practice exercises for you. Feel free to go back and relook at some of this video at any time. I'll see you next time on the Code Circus.